Hi, welcome to the second part of our Get Details and Display in Table series. So in the last part of the video, we created our HTML codes and I show, showed you what the final output is and we have this so far. So we have a very ugly looking little app. You can't even call it an app. Okay, so we have something on our web page so far and in this video, we can start designing this app so it looks better okay so let's get to our style.css file and to start off okay let me first select all the elements in html so when you do this when you give this symbol this particular star symbol it selects all the per all the elements of html from uh, the whole html page it, it selects the body it selects uh, all the div containers, it selects a button, input, whatever you have in your HTML page, it selects all of them and you can give universal, it's a universal selector, okay, so you can give universal uh, stylings for all of your elements. So I'm just going to keep it simple, so margin is going to be 0, padding is going to be 0, so that's it, because, uh, see, if you can see here, everything went and everything stuck to the page right now so there's no margin there's no padding margin is space between the element and the other element so that's why there's no space here and then padding is the space within the element okay so you have a button here and you have text here if there is space between the button and the text that's padding okay so let's let's go for the other parts now let's give our background color if you see here our entire page okay our entire page has a different kind of background but it's not a single color we have multiple colors on here and if I remember correctly it's three different colors and they're it's kind of transparent so it's, it's a very if I can say so myself it's a very good looking background uh, and we're going to try to create that right now so before we do that let me just give a generic background for our app because we're going to be using CSS3 features to create our multicolor background right here. So some some browsers, some old browsers can't read CSS3 codes at all. So because of that, and, and a lot of people still have old browsers. So because of that, we need fail safe mechanism. So if everything else fails, okay, so if, if the CSS3 codes aren't read, then we need a, a simple dummy background that can be displayed okay let's look at our output see we have a simple little background which kind of looks similar but it's not very good looking but we can have that as our fail safe and then now let's let's create our radial gradient background okay so it's a css3 feature okay background radial gradient so radial gradient is basically it starts from the center and it goes like this okay so radial think of circles kind of like that okay and then there's linear gradient which would be m like lines right here okay so you can give multiple colors in here inside this and I'm just gonna give three colors first one RGB is so RGB is another form of giving colors R is red G B A is for transparency Okay, so G is for green B is for blue. So when I give 255 here, okay, that means I'm giving red I'm giving a red value here. Okay uh, If I give 255 255 255 under R G and B that means it's white color if I give 0 0 0 Okay, that means it's black color. Okay, so that's how it works. So for now, we need a lightish blue color for the first, and then we need a white color, and then we need black color, each with different kind of transparencies. Okay, so the blue, blue color is going to be 179, so 179 in red, and then 255. 255 so it's a greenish blue color with some with a tinge of red something like that okay so we have a color here and then it's going to have a transparency of 0.5 okay and then rgba again for our second color 
it's going to be white so as I told you white is 255 255 255 which means RGB values are all completely filled okay and then the transparency is going to be 0 0.5 so when you give 0 0.5 that means it's transparent if it's zero that means it's not visible at all if it's one it means it's completely opaque that that is it's completely visible so when you give uh, 0 0.5 that means it's transparent so it's a middle value okay and then finally let's give black as well but in here I don't want the black black color to be very visible so I'll make it 0 0.3 so it's not as visible as our uh, bluish color and our white color okay so this is the radial gradient we have three colors here and all the three colors have their own transparencies so when you look at the output okay we have a decent background here okay you can play around with it maybe you could make the uh, make the transparency much lighter okay to, uh, to get a different effect make it 0 0.2 so you have a different kind of effect here uh, or make this lesser it's all up to you you can play around with all of these things and then you can get the output that you want okay so let's leave it, leave it at this and then finally I'm going to align all the text to the center so since we uh, we selected HTML as in the whole document this basically means that we are we are aligning all the elements in this particular document to the center okay all the text in this to the center and then next let's uh, okay now <clears throat> okay now what do we need ah okay the first one the first one has to be has to be on top okay it has to have a margin from the page and that's why we need an ID here so I made a mistake here so let's add an ID here named it because we are going to give a different kind of styling special styling for this so the first div which is which has both of these things okay so you see it's selected here so for that first of all it's going to have a margin top so a top margin of 50 pixels see it's down now and then we can select all our classes so all of our as you can see here all of our divs which hold all of the inputs have a class called input so we can select that here so we can give the same styling for all our inputs so the font size of it is going to be 25 pixels it's bigger now good the color sorry color is going to be 004d00 so I took this color out of uh, out of the internet from you can probably look at the w3 schools um, color picker okay just google that and I'm sure you'll You'll get multiple options to choose from okay okay we have our color here and then font weight font weight is how you make your text bold so when I give 700 it's it's kind of bold okay and then the font family is going to be cursive so there you go so let, let me come out of the selection okay we have a decent enough okay we have a decent enough output here so far and then we can look at our button for now see our button it's very small it does not have much styling at all so entry that's our, that's the id of our button so let's select our button with that id the width of the button is going to be 150 pixels the height of the button is going to be 40 pixels okay big enough now and then font size is going to be 23 pixels the font size of the button text okay and the font family I'm not going to give a cursive here I'm going to give something different comic sans ms so if comic sans ms does not work then cursive has to work if cursive does not work then sans serif could work so these are fail safes okay so just like we created a fail safe here okay we created a fail safe that will work in case our 
radial gradient feature does not work so like that if comic sans ms is not accepted in the browser that the user is opening the app on then cursor would work if cursor does not work sans serif would work and sans serif works in all the browsers because it's a standard font okay so these are fail safes and then a uh, background color sorry sorry background color is going to be 001a66 so I've already created this app so I know the color so and then the color of the text is going to be white smoke okay all right looks better now now finally the box shadow box shadow is the if you look at the final output here we have a back box shadow in here do you see See, this box has a shadow here so we can create the shadow okay let me go back here and make the 0 0.3 does not look clear enough at all okay 0 0.3 looks good so our box shadow for the box shadow there are going to be that we have multiple options so the first one the first one is the horizontal so if you want a horizontal shadow okay then you can you can give the first option but i don't want a horizontal shadow so i'll make that zero then vertical shadow is going to be two pixels and then another two pixels for the blur index so i want my shadow to be blurred so two pixels and then I make it zero again for the spread so how far our my shadow can spread i don't want it to spread at all okay i already gave a blur i don't want it to spread and finally rgba okay rgba our shadows color is going to be black so zero 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 and i'm going to be make it i'm going to be making it transparent so 0 0.5 so that's our box shadow see we have a decent enough box shadow and there is no box shadow in the horizontal position there's just the vertical and then um and then we have two pixels blur which you can see here probably it's kind of blurred but it's not too blurred and it's not spread too far out of our button because we gave the blur uh, we gave the spread index as zero so that's it for our button and maybe we could give some give some margin here just to make everything evened out margin maybe a 30 pixels margin right here okay looks kind of good now okay as you can see here our inputs have spacing as well so we can give spacings for our inputs too um let's go here and make create a margin for here as well we already have a margin top for named alone so too much probably too much okay maybe 20 kind of looks good and then this margin margin top yeah you could probably make it 10 okay kind of looks good now i think so okay it's good now all right so that's it for our input section now let's go back to our uh, our table so first of all we're going to going to be designing our table as such okay so select the table because since there's only one table in our html file so see there's only one table so we don't have to actually select it with an id we can directly select it as table and there's only one table so that's the only table that's going to get our design so first of all the border collapse i'm going to make it collapse now why this because when i make the border collapse collapse then all the double borders that you'll get once you create borders around all your tables and your cells all that would collapse and you'll get a single border okay so that's why we're using this particular option so width is 50 percent of our page so width is going to be 50 percent of our page see as you can see here exactly 50 percent of our page and then uh, margin is going to be 50 pixels for top and bottom okay and then auto auto for right and left so when you do when you create auto for right and left what that means is it's going to come to the center and divide the right and left margin 
exactly by half so that basically means it's getting getting your element to the center okay so now that you've done that and finally let's give a background color for our table background color is going to be burly wood okay okay we have our table now and then let's select all our elements of the table so table uh, table heading table rows I mean table cells everything so we don't have to select cells uh, we don't have to select tr here because tr does not actually have any cell okay it's just a row so it's enough if you select the table as such and then th and then td so first of all let's give it a border so it's going to be two pixels in width and it's going to be a solid straight line border and the color of the border is going to be black so let's see if we got it okay we got it perfect and then let's create a padding for all the cells as well the padding is going to be five pixels just like that okay now our table is kind of bigger next let's let's make the let's create silings for our table heading the font size of our table heading is going to be 30 pixels okay big enough now and then the font weight is going to be 700 so it becomes bold it is now and then the font family is going to be Arial okay good and then color is going to be a greenish color so 0, 0, 4, D, 0, 0. we already used this color for our inputs so where where is it so this color sorry oh this one okay so we're going to use the same color for our table heading as well and then let's design our table cells the ordinary cells okay the text inside our ordinary cells that's td the font size is going to be 25 pixels in this case okay so it's smaller and then the color is going to be crimson you can't see any of that right now in the output because we haven't created our javascript yet but that's okay we'll get to that pretty soon the font weight is going to be 400 and the font family is going to be georgia okay so that's it for our okay so we have 62 lines of code in our in our style.css file so we've completed our stylings completely and if you refresh it you have a pretty good looking app so far the only thing that's missing is all the rows in here and we can get to that as and when uh, we get to our script.js file so in the next video let's look at how to make this app work with script dot with our javascript code so i'll see you there again please subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this and also leave comments because i always read them and i hope you had fun Please like the video as well if you liked it and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.